AM Agenda host Laura Jays is live for us at McAllen, Texas. Laura, can the Republicans get over the line? Well, Kenny, as we've moved through Texas, immigration policy and politics is dominated, of course. But behind all of that, there are real people. There's a decision that's being made in Washington every single day that is affecting their lives. In a moment, you're going to meet a seventh generation rancher. He wants Trump back and he wants the wall built. But first, meet Dordani. She is 27 years old. She made her way here from Honduras on her own with a two-month-old baby girl. She did that because she owes the cartels thousands of dollars. She came here two years ago and was sent back. The cost of that trip is what she's still paying for now. She said she had no other choice but to attempt to get to America again to pay off that debt. And this is why she took the risk. Um, decidí venir, claro, como todo por un por el sueño americano, verdad, tener una mejor vida, de poder darle una mejor vida a mi bebé. Uh, she said she came for the American dream. Um, she has a four-year-old daughter that stayed behind, and um, but what's important is that she's here, and she can also help her daughter that stayed behind. Um, so it's all for the American dream, and she thank God that she was able to arrive safe. And what a huge risk it was. She left Honduras heavily pregnant. Then at the final hurdle, crossing over into Texas, she went into labour. She had no other choice but to have her baby on the banks of the Rio Grande River. She was alone. Then there was one person that came to help her to put her baby on her chest after it was born and help her cut the umbilical cord. That stranger didn't have any medical expertise, that stranger had just seen it on a movie, the idea of putting a baby on a chest. Then she was left alone again. There were no border patrol around, so she was forced to walk with her minutes-old baby until finally some authorities stumbled upon her. Ah, la verdad fue bien horrible porque la verdad si yo si... Um, she said it felt horrible. Obviously, she didn't want to have her daughter in the circumstances. Um, she started feeling the pain as she was crossing the river. And many times she would close her legs because, she, again, she didn't want to have a daughter that wasn't in a hospital, didn't have the infrastructure. But it got to a point that she just couldn't do it anymore. And she laid across a little, um, like a little dirt by a tree and she started pushing and this lady came and helped her and she says, I don't know really how to help you, but I see on TV that they put the baby on the mother's chest. And then they cut um, her umbilical cord and she stayed there hoping that um, a police would come and get her, a border patrol would come and get her and nobody came. So she had to pick the baby up and continue to walk. Dodani called her little girl Milagros, and that is miracle in English. And she's a very healthy little baby girl. Sister Norma is another incredible person we met in our travels in Texas. She runs a, a Catholic charity in the centre of McAllen. She helps migrants every single day on their journey. What she explained to us is that these migrants haven't even gone through the toughest part. Yes, they've been travelling for weeks and months to get to the United States. They've tried to dodge Border Patrol officers. But now that hard work begins, and this is why. Continuously, and, and cartels and gangs or anyone that, that is out there to take advantage of them in any way. And so they're constantly watching out to who is approaching them because they don't know if there's a friend or somebody's going to help or somebody's going to hurt them. You know? So by the time they arrive here, they're exhausted I know, emotionally, psychologically, and, and sometimes even physically. You know, 
you seeing an increase in the demand for your services? Not at all. Not, no, really? not this year. Not this year. Wow. I mean, it, we, there's nothing compared to 2019. You know, 20, 2019, we had the most number of people that ever arrived to, here to us. You know, uh, this year, numbers, you know, the, the, we still see that the, the effects of the fact that the border is closed. The border is closed, so therefore that means that most people are either sent back to Mexico or to their country. Mm -hmm. Those that they're not able to send back are the ones that we may see here, you know, and which is a, a definitely a, a lesser number of people, you know. Our numbers are not very low, like we saw them after uh, when they had some policies and shut down a lot of things and nobody could cross into the United States. Right now we're seeing some people maybe 200, 300, sometimes up to 500 people. But in 2019, we were seeing 2,000 people. Yeah. Wow. So why do you think that is? Because the, the figures uh, across the whole southern border is a record number, more than 2.2 million. So why do you think you're not seeing that? Because here? people actually try to attempt to enter, but they don't enter. They are sent back, you know? And they may try attend again and again and again, but they are sent back, you know? Sister, I know that you're so busy here doing your work, but you wouldn't be impervious to the, the political debate. How do you see it? Um, do you see a solution here? Unfortunately, what I see is no solution, that nobody's trying to come up with a solution to address what really is happening, why people are coming in the first place, why can't we work with those governments and to make sure that th these people are coming for, for fear for their lives. They need safety, they need protection. They're not getting in anywhere, so they're trying to... I, I think that the United States needs to be in a position to provide that safety, that protection, and to work with those governments and those countries so that they can find it in their own country and they don't have to migrate and lose their lives the way they do. You know, unfortunately, politically, it has become a, a, a back and forth kind of like uh, more of, a, of an election kind of yeah. effort rather than a let's look at humanity and how white suffering the way it is and let us address that. And I don't see that happening. Yeah, that is uh, Sister Norma. Her work continues whatever the outcome of the midterm elections. Now, meet Rupert Escobar. He is a seventh generation rancher. He has lived in Roma his whole life. This is here in southern Texas. And his ranch is right on the border with Mexico. He's had migrants passing through his property for as long as he can rem remember. He's even helped some of them, many of them, over the years. He has to contend, though, with the cartels on a more regular basis and more regularly than he is comfortable with. He has no power to control what migrants pass through his property and they're doing so in huge numbers and sometimes, as he explained to us, his safety is threatened. Rupert, you seem like you're at the front line of this almost every day. So what do you think needs to be done? What would you tell those politicians? We need that border wall real bad. But the moment we change president, that border wall construction stop. Now, I'm not saying that the border wall is going to stop everything, but it will hold them long enough for the police to get there. But they won't build it for us now. As long as Mr. Biden is in there, that is not going to happen. And we had already given permission for them to come to my property. My cousins and I had already signed paperwork. But they stopped it. Now, I'll tell you about myself and my ancestors. We've lived here since 1767. We're standing here on the spot that my great-great-great-great-grandfather came when this was all brush. This is a land grant from the King of Spain that was given to them. When he came here, they had access to the Rio Grande for water. And that's how all of us Escobars come about. This is where we come from, from that one gentleman. We've lived here since then. This was not the border. This was part of the new Spain. 
People crossed it because they had to. They want to cross, no problem. But at some point, this becomes a border, and then it's illegal to do some things. So... I can see this is really emotional for you. It is. This is real. Of course. Can you explain that emotion We're to me? We're living it. Yeah. You see, what we've had to do is to learn how to live and let live. One time, my pump was running. I get a permit to run it from 8 in the morning to 10 at night. So 10 at night, I'm coming through that gate. There was two guys standing there with AK-47. He said, stop. So I stopped. You guys cannot come further. You need to turn back and go back where you come from. I said, but guy, all I'm going to do is turn my, my engine down. He said, you can't do that. This place is ours tonight. And this is my property. That was the cartel telling that to you yes, on your own property? in my own property. So Have I you turned... ever been in danger, Rupert? Well, see, that's the danger I'm talking about. When I tell you we have learned to live all these generations before me. Got it. I am seventh generation here. And ever since that became the border, people have been crossing whatever this way and whatever that way. I've seen many tractors when the river is low like this, that's that low spot over there. I've seen tractors going that way. I've seen horses, high-priced horses. I've seen high-priced bulls, hogs, sheep going back that way. And coming this way, of course, at some point it was tequila. And then it was other things and other things. And now it's drugs. So all the generations before me learned to live and let live. I do not know what a cigarette of marijuana tastes like. I've never had a puff of a marijuana cigarette. I don't know what it tastes like. I've never used my area, my property, for contraband purposes. But other people do. They come right through here. The young man that was with me that night when they stopped us there told me, Sir, aren't you going to call the Border Patrol? I said, No. He said, Why? I said, because tomorrow... You and I might be dead. When we come to crank up that pump again, they're going to shoot at us from the other side. Live, let live. What about the pump, he said? Well, when the diesel runs out, the pump will stop. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So I've seen that danger. I've lived it. And this is part of the reason why I get emotional. When somebody comes and tells you in your own property that it's not yours, it's mind-boggling. You want to do something about it, but you can't. Rupert is 78 years old, so he has seen some things on his property. You can understand his emotion when he feels like he doesn't have control over it. He told us that he, he wants that wall built. He wants it finished. He wants to see Trump back. He's very frustrated with Joe Biden and the Democrats in his town because he sees what needs to happen. He knows the wall isn't perfect, but at least it did uh, create some kind of barrier. These are not perfect solutions. We've heard that while we've been here. We just need to see that story of Dodani as well to know that there are real people affected by the policies and the decisions made in Washington. In five days' time, there will be a result in this midterm election and it is going to change things on immigration policy if the Republicans do get up in border towns like this. Kenny?